Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Happy Aloha Friday and welcome to a brand new episode of Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii. This is your host Beatrice Cantelmo. On February 14, a mass shooting was committed in the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. 17 people, mostly high school students, were killed by a gunman armed with an AR-15. 17 more students were wounded, making it one of the world's deadliest school massacres. In response, 15, 16, and 7-year-old high schoolers of Stone, Stoneman Douglas High School declared that enough is enough and started a brand new movement, Never Again. They have been demanding uh, that our government adopt gun violence control reform now in the United States. These students also started the March Outs and on, the, uh, on March 14th and the March for Our Lives movement on March 24th, which was adopted by high school students in every community across this nation, including all over the state of Hawaii. Today's episode of Perspectives on Global Justice, Think Tech Hawaii, we get to hear from Gabriel Fernandez, Emiloa Borland, Hayden Hawkins, and uh, uh, Christine. They are high school students who came in solidarity and action at the fir by first leading and co-organizing March Outs with their high school peers in their respective high schools on March 14. And they have also united forces with other high school students to organize and lead a 100% independent high school movement on Oahu. Their first event was the High School March for Our Lives Honolulu at Alamoana Boulevard, which had the participation of high school students from the following 12 high schools. Ferritun High School, Assets High School, Mo Moana Lua High School, Hawaii Technology Academy, Le Jardin Academy, Punahou High School, University Laboratory High School, Kalani High School, Yulani School, Campbell High School, Waipahu High School, and Pacific Buddhist Academy. We are excited to hear more from these young high school activists and leaders and to learn more about their vision and mission for the movement that they started on their own in Honolulu. We will also learn about what is enough, in, is enough and the Never Again movement means to each one of them individually and collectively, and their plans moving forward to give continuity to this movement on our Aina. By the end of our program, we hope that our other high school, middle schools, and elementary school students will feel inspired to, do, to join this high school-led and organized movement, and on how um, our community can support them and their leadership structure. On that note, welcome to our program, Thank you Aiden much. and yeah. Amy. <laughs> Yes, wow. So I want to start by asking you um, to give me your own personal account of how did the Parkland shooting impacted you? Where were you at and what were your thoughts when you first heard about it? So who would you like to start? <laughs> want to go? Sure. I, I can say. Yeah. Uh, on, on February 14th, it was for the most part just, you know, just a normal day. Valentine's Day, nonetheless. But I was at school and I saw like a CNN notification on my phone about uh, there, there's a shooting event happening in Florida, mm -hmm. and that was in like uh, early development state. So I just kind of I honestly brushed that off because that's actually something I see kind of often because mm -hmm. there's news alerts about things, and sometimes it, it's just there's so many of them that I suppose you, you're kind of desensitized. So I just kind of brushed it off, but. As the day progressed, I got home from school, and by then, like there was plenty of uh, information about what had happened that day, and I actually I read about what exactly had happened, how it was a former student, etc., and I honestly was appalled because that is now that sh the the Parkland shooting is on the top ten list now. That's it's just terrible, mm -hmm. and it's it's astonishing that even now like Columbine's off that list. Like Parkland helped to push that off the list, and I was appalled. I, I'm still appalled, but I. There was something different in the days that followed the students that survived the shooting actually 
began to take action. And that was inspiring. People like Emma Gonzalez, uh, like the speeches that they gave uh, through tears or not, like in wake of like the t horrible tragedy that struck their peers, their teachers, like the, their, the staff members of their school. In wake of that, they still managed to come out and like actually make some kind of a movement out of this, a, a good movement, not inspired by like some political jargon, nothing. It's logical, and to them, it's logical because they shouldn't have to suffer through something like that. And that inspired me personally to begin to take action. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful to hear how this connected to you at fast from a place mm -hmm. of almost desensitization from hearing so many shootings to yeah. wait a minute, let's shift this. Something to a was different. Direction. Yes. This time, something was different. And uh, uh, what about for you, Emilio? How did this impact you on February 14th? Um, I was at school when it happened. I didn't find out until I got home and I saw on my phone everyone was posting like, you know, our thoughts and prayers with Parkland. I'm like, what's happening? And I looked it up and I was like, oh, it's just another school shooting. And then I just kind of forgot about it a bit. And then I woke up the next morning and I heard about all the Parkland students coming together and I was like, I was like, oh, why did I think that? You know, that's not acceptable for it to just be another school shooting because mm -hmm. these are 17 lives that were taken away. It shouldn't just be another incident of, oh, we just lost people. You know, and just the desensitization of it all is just really awful and yeah. how it's become such a common occurrence. You just shrug it off. Mm -hmm. And watching the students speak and demanding for change and action helped inspire me. I'm like, if these people who are still coping with their traumas can do this, and of course I can do this. Oh, wow, that's really powerful. So I'm going to actually ask you both the same question, and I'll, I would like to hear from you, uh, Amy, first. Um, so how did you think about uh, what you could do as a high schooler and also in your school to uh, join uh, Enough is Enough movement? What were your first steps? Um, well, me and Hayden, we met at a cafe together, and we kind of worked through, and we're trying to just figure out what are we supposed to Did do. Did you call each other right away? <laughs> there, there was kind a, of, yeah. sort of. It was a there strange, was a delay. Yeah, yeah but um, we Did got, you know each other before? Yeah, yeah. You got yeah. to different yeah. schools. Actually, yeah. 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 Was, do you want to talk about that real fast? Or? Uh, yeah. Sure, yeah. We, yeah. we met at a youth talk back, yeah. which is led by Seeds of Peace, which is a nonprofit peace organization. Yeah. organization. And it's a space where students can just talk about issues that matter to them. I met Hayden there. I met kids from all across yeah. the island and from other islands, and it was a really great experience. But we came together just about a week or two at yeah, the end of February. Like that, yeah. And we just were like, okay, let's plan this out. March 14th is when there's going to be a national walkout. Let's talk to our administrators and, you know, talk to them and have us schedule our own uh, Walk walkout. Out. Yeah. Yes. And so we just kind of did that, and I, I went up to my school principal, and we had I had a 45-minute meeting with her, and we just mm -hmm. talked about you know how the students are going to walk out, and how she and her fellow administrators can help support us and future stuff that we'll be doing. So you didn't quite ask; you just pretty much said we're going to do this, yeah. so we would really not get to be on board with yeah. it. And uh, uh, were they on board right away? Was there any resistance? No, there was very little resistance from uh, the administration. Just wanted to make sure that students were going to be on campus and stay on campus. Right. So we scheduled it for the middle of our quad and the academy, at the high school. So how many students showed up during your walkout? Every football? single student in the academy, this I'm pretty sure, showed up. Thousand, thousand something. Two hundred, like two thousand. We have seventeen hundred kids in the academy, and we also were lucky enough to have about a hundred or two hundred middle schoolers show up as well. And it was really amazing to see such a school-wide movement and everyone coming together to honor the victims and to, you know, start getting ready to rally and to fight. So very private, but an entire school that came together to really make meaning of the lives that were lost and to mourn that loss and to come together in solidarity. That's really powerful. How about for you, Hayden? Uh, yeah. What happened with the march out, and the, how did you feel also uh, that urge to say, what can I do as a, as a student, and how can I connect with my other fellow peers to get this going here in Honolulu? Yeah, well, 
in the days, something else that happened in the days that followed the Parkland shooting, uh, there were calls nationally to have a walkout on, on March 14th. Mm -hmm. Like there was a proposal to wear orange as like the rallying color of the movement. And there were, there was other things like March 24th, that was gonna be March for Our Lives. And April 20th is another proposed walkout. And all of that was put out there by like uh, Parkland or, or, organizers and uh, that was spread around the country. And I picked up on that. And my immediate thought was, I want to do that. Like, we, we need to do that. Not much of a want. Like, this has to happen. And I started asking my friends, like, hey, do, do, do you want to walk out, like, on the 14th? Like, do you want to, is that something you do? Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, people that aren't always uh, super keen or, like, uh, people that aren't always really into politics were like, yeah, yeah, I think we should probably do that. But there was a common sentiment I heard, and that was that, I have an opinion on this, and I'd like to express that opinion, but I don't want to get suspended or like given detention for walking out of class on the 14th, which is understandable. So right. I began to push for uh, making it a school-sanctioned event, and that alleviates any concerns about like, being suspended or anything. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, our, our, our state has been just so, the education system especially, has been so supportful of these events, and like you have the the office of the deputy superintendent putting out statements about uh, like, like actually condoning these events and like pushing for schools to make a learning experience out of this and not just like mm -hmm. say no you can't do that. Yeah, we've been so, very lucky. Yeah. Yes. So actually speaking of uh, where we're at as a state, I mean Hawaii is a very uh, amazing state with regards to gun legislation. We have one of the most uh, strict laws implemented and there are uh, three other states who follow the same trend, and uh, ah, surprise, surprise, we also have not only Hawaii, but in the other states, uh, the lowest uh, uh, fatalities due to gun wound or gun violence. So, um, as you think about this movement led uh, by high schoolers, you know, all over the country, why is in a very special place? Because I think every state wants to be and to mirror, you know, where we at. And so, you know, I think part of um, the invitation and the beauty, I think, of having this movement here also is that yes, there is a national call for the end of gun violence and for gun reform nationwide. We already are, you know, ahead of the curve as a state. So I would like to ask the both of you, uh, your thoughts, you know, as you uh, help advance this movement forward in, this, in Hawaii, not only Oahu, but, you know, with other islands and with other peers of yours. Um, where do you see this vantage point of Hawaii and how would you like to promote, you know, where are we at to empower all the states to do the same? Do Who would like to start? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. Well, Hawaii's kind of always been a pioneer in, you know, these kind of issues. Back in the 60s during the civil rights movement, we were, Hawaii was saying, you know, integration works because we're such a mixed place. Mm -hmm. right. And, you know, uh, we, we were one of the first states to have universal health care. Um, we were one of the first to have legal gay marriage, you know, so we're usually like a couple steps ahead of the rest of the country. And, you know, the, a lot of the arguments against like gun control is when someone brings up Australia's gun control, people say, oh, that's Australia. It's not, it's not America. And you can be like, well, in Hawaii, we've had this. We're part of America, technically. You know, we have these laws and they work. We have very little, there's like very little deaths from gun violence. And, it's important for us to be able to tell people in the rest of the country, like, hey, we can do this, and you know, just help ins inspire everyone else and show that Hawaii, Hawaii knows what's up. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you're pushing, you know, at the legislative level that perhaps all the states have to do a much harder work. We already got that, so it's really about supporting our representatives yes. to continue to be the champions, you know, ahead of the game in that but really supporting uh, other states and other students to have that sense of, of safety mm -hmm. and that assurance that every state should have, you know, for gun control uh, reform and, you know, run it like it is in Hawaii, aloha. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, I suppose something else on that. There's a, of the criticism that this movement has received nationally, locally something that I've heard is that 
uh, it's pointless, what are you doing, etc. But beyond that, this uh, common sentiment of um, like it's th th there, there's no point to uh, going out and like doing this because uh, what's it going to change here? And I think that's that's not the point. I think the point is that we we brought some change here, and that change worked. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I think part of the change to locally is about civic engagement. I mean, you're having 15-year-olds, you know, elementary school age yeah. students doing this. We have to take a very quick break, but we'll be right back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Gabrielli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matter to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests, the students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, and I'm here every other week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. on ThinkTech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. In Hawaii Together, we talk with some of the most fascinating people in the islands about working together, working together for a better economy, government, and society. So I invite you into our conversation every other Monday at 2 p.m. on ThinkTech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Join us for Hawaii Together. I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Well, welcome back to Perspectives on Global Justice. Think Tech Hawaii program. This is your host, Beatrice Cantelmo. And I am back at our second segment in that we have new students with us. <laughs> so we have Christine Mao and Gabriel um, Fernandez. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to actually start this uh, second part of the uh, segment by asking the same questions I asked over in Miloa in uh, uh, Hayden. Where were you at when you first heard of the Parkland shooting on oh, yes. February 14? And uh, how did you react to this and what got you started with the movement? Well, uh, I didn't hear about it until I, after I finished school that day, because, you know, kind of busy. <laughs> but after I got home, my grandma had told me about what happened, and I thought it was awful. But, you know, you, like, since it happened so often, I, got, I was desensitized to it. So I was like, you know, like, okay, like, it's really bad, but, I mean, nothing crazy is going to come from this, like, other than... So I didn't think much of it. And then uh, later I saw all the kids doing their speeches, and I saw that one kid uh, talking to Marco Rubio and said like hey could you look me like straight in the eyes and tell me that you're not taking any money from the NRA and that was crazy I was like well he's really sticking it to him so that kind of inspired me and mm -hmm. yeah so. what was it about that moment Gabriel that you felt inspired about it Just as a 15 yeah. year old young teenager living inside <laughs> of Hawaii you know just the fact that somebody like that young like a teenager or something can really go up to like a politician act like really hard hitting questions and get mm -hmm. answers like maybe it's not the answer that they wanted but like you can do that like that that's possible at, in the first place to actually go out and like absolutely accountability like can be asked uh, you know and scrutiny of any government can yeah. be demanded by any a person at any age, and uh, I think the students have showed that. You know? yeah. So how about for you, Christine? Uh, like everyone else, I didn't find out really until after school, and also like everyone else, I didn't think too much of it, because even though it was very bad, I had heard so much uh, bad news over the past few years that I just didn't really think much of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think a day or two later, I remember looking at the videos of the students speaking. I remember talking to Amy Loa and a few other students at my school about this issue and feeling really inspired about their persistence on the subject, even though they were having to go through such a horrible event. And uh, so you already connected the, with Anoda, Pia, and friend Emiloa, but you are from a different school, Moana Lua. Yeah, so, so how did you get started <laughs> with the match out? It's kind of funny. So uh, I've been friends with Hayden since like 
third or second grade. We went to the same oh. elementary school, like a Voyager uh, oh, charter so. school. Yeah, so we've been we've known each other for a long time, and basically how I got involved is he just posted some stuff on a Snapchat story about like <laughs> Donald Trump and like how uh, he was doing, saying that uh, teachers should be armed and how he thought that wasn't a good idea, and I agreed with him, so I reached out to him and I was like, yeah, yeah. Let's, so this really <laughs> has been a movement of grassroots students to yeah. do Snapchat. Yeah. You guys use Snapchat, Instagram, yeah, text each other. I mean, that's what yeah. teenagers are most frequently on, so right. like, that's a pretty good way to reach so out. So from that place of saying, okay, we're going to do match out, and you, you had a match out at mm. Moana Lua, yes. so did you guys have to go and talk to your principal? Hey, you want to support well, actually, us? Uh, how did that go? Uh, so, the uh, off, or the uh, school got word of it, and they they just asked this one particular like teacher to go handle it. But then the teacher was like, "No, this is a student-led thing." So he reached out to some students and started them working on it. And uh, I wanted to be involved, so I went and asked them. But right. by the time I came and asked, the superintendent already gave the letter. So it was actually really nice. easy and nice. And How perceptive of this teacher to say. No, I defer the power back to the students because this really has been a movement started and fueled by students, high schoolers. Yeah. And it would feel very uh, unauthentic mm -hmm. if it was done any differently. So kudos to that teacher yeah, for, for sure. having yeah. had that vision and saying, mm, no, we will support, <laughs> but the kids lead. And so, okay, so from March outs in your respective schools to then getting together to do a March for Our Lives at La Moana, I would like to hear, uh, you know, it would be wonderful to have all the kids available <laughs> here at Hayden and uh, in Miloa, but I think yeah. it's the part that it, I'm very... Uh, move that I was there actually yeah. and uh, oh. it was a beautiful uh, event uh, very well organized very modest you know like I know that uh, all the events around the island and then even around the country had huge attendance and mega productions and it was very simple and uh, <laughs> Had, it had students from 12 schools and uh, a beautiful program. Everybody spoke from the heart. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and you had your parents and you had uh, community supporters there. I want to know why you wanted to do a march the way you did and not choose to do something so super mega. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons why we didn't uh, well, we why we made our own march was because of some complications with the capital march that was organized, and uh, we figured that since we're having complications with them, we might as well make our own. Mm -hmm. And since we didn't have the production like value or like we didn't have as much money to organize it, we decided to try and gather as many people as we can but still keep it as authentic as authentic, authentic as possible yeah. uh, yeah, as possible it was oh all my about God. authenticity because you know at the capital event like there's politicians and everything and you know they have their own agendas and even though like maybe we're all on the, a lot of us are on the same side like you know they might have ulterior motives and like special interests and we just wanted to separate ourselves from that and be like we're just teenagers no incentive, no nothing. We're just here and we're doing this mm -hmm. for us and for our peers. And at the national level, actually, at the March for Our Lives in Washington, D.C., the mic was open only to students 18 and under, and no politicians, no adults came to speak uh, or even to organize at NPR. The students for Parkland actually made very clear that the adults who wanted to support, whether they were doing this independently or as organizations, that they really had to play a supportive role, not an organizational or leadership role. So I really commend, uh, uh, you know, your march organizers for sticking to the uh, integrity of the intention of this march and for sticking to your guns and not really caring about what the outcome would be in terms of presence. I think that the success and the meaning of uh, your event really played on those factors, you know. Yeah. It's and, and and I really look forward to see you um, evolving, you know, with this movement. So what's next? What's the plan? What you guys 
been cooking and talking about <laughs> and brewing. What's coming? So, well, I know for a fact that we want to have, because since we have the time to, we want to do something between now and April 20th. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the April 20th plans are still tentative. Like, you know, it will differ from every school. We don't want to blindside everybody and just be like, now you have like 100 less students or something. Right. That would be bad. So we want to make sure that like we make sure that we tell the school like what's happening on that date. And then also, I mean, while we have the time and everything, we need to do as much as we can. Mm -hmm. So for the students who may wish to follow up, what are you up to? Uh, where do they go for that information? Do you have a Facebook page? Do you have a Snapshot yes. page? Do you have a, <laughs> an Instagram page? No. Yeah, our Instagram would probably be the best place to go for that. Um, and, yeah. We, we do have Facebook too, but uh, Instagram would probably be the best. That's March for Alliance Honolulu. Yeah. March for Alliance Honolulu. Uh, excellent. And so um, I would like to ask the both of you what is the message that you would like to share with your peers and with other, you know, from your school, but also, you know, from kids from other communities about this movement? What, you know, what would it be compelling for them in the state of Hawaii to say, Let's do something together. Yeah. Uh, they're teenagers, so <laughs> I know it's hard. <laughs> I know it's hard to, you know, get up from the couch. I know it's hard to get out of your bed. I know it's hard to even go anywhere, but especially somewhere where you have to put in some effort and maybe you're not super, like, entertained by it. But it's really important, and I want to stress that, and that, you know, like, this is something that we need to do. And that's why you got out of your couch on Saturday. Yes, Saturday, that is exactly. On a rainy day, <laughs> it's a rainy right? day on Saturday. Did why? This? Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. it was for a, reason, a good reason. Yeah. Right, right. What about for you? Uh, for anybody who says that we're trying to ban guns, we're not. We're not pushing for people to ban guns. We're pushing for uh, better regulations. Hopefully, not uh, allowing people to sell or buy bump stocks, which turn semi-automatic weapons into automatic. Mm -hmm. And we just want to show the world that we care about this issue, and we want to be an example for the rest of the nation. And we already are, and you already are, I mean, in so many ways, despite all of the adversities and other constraints you had to go through. Uh, I really hope that this may be the first of many times you show up here uh, at our program at Think Tech uh, as guests to kind of give us an update of what's happening, what you're learning along the way. Because I know it's hard, you know, you want to organize, but this is, you know, your first probably time as activists putting something together. So you have yeah. to sort out permits, agendas, <laughs> meetings, yeah. and this is part of the learning how to, and you're already networking with each other. And you already have the core, the most important thing of all of this. The other stuff is important, but it's the gravy. The, the, the deal of this is the heart and the connection that you all have with each other. And as long as you have that, you're going to do great. So <laughs> thank, thank you. you so very much thank for you. coming here. Thank you. Well, this concludes uh, our episode of Perspectives on Global Justice for today. Thank you so much for watching us and uh, see you next Friday. Uh, we hope.